Good morning, everyone. The agent of webinar is to worry about atomic spectroscopy technique for elemental analysis uh, like and elemental impurities. I'll be talking about flame atomic absorption spectrometer, graphite furnace atomic absorption spectrometer, the hydride kits for lower detection of uh, some of the volatile elements, then interferences will be discussed. Then I will talk on ICP OES technology uh, instrumentation and the hydride kit technique for ICP OES, uh, the uh, spectral interferences we normally face in ICP OES and how to perform the correction of those interferences and then I will talk on application. After that, I will discuss on ICPMS technique and instrumentation. You know, there are certain interferences in ICPMS, how to play with those interferences using DRC cell that I will discuss and then application and little about sample pressure also I will talk. So if you know like uh, any, if you are using any analytical technique uh, like uh, AS, ICPOS or ICPMS, when you prepare method, then picture of periodic table comes in front of you and it allow you to select different metals as per your interest. So if you see, if you know like uh, in periodic table, the elements are organized uh, as per their atomic number, electronic configuration and chemical property of the elements. So if you see at the left side, you will find most of the elements in metal, metallic form. And if you go to right side, non-metals are present. So whatever highlighted in colors here, those elements can be done on AS using flame technique or graphite furnace technique. What are in gray cannot be done on AS technology. Uh, in ICP OES, you can do all these elements, whatever you can do on AS. Other than this, you can do some additional elements like uh, some of the halogens are possible on some of the ICP OES, lanthanide and some of the actinide also possible. And in ICPMS, uh, you can do almost all elements depending on the, uh, the mass range of the ICPMS you are going to use. You know that there are national and international regulations are available to ensure the quality of different material, the quality of different products. So in those guidelines, they have mentioned the permissible limit as well as they also mentioned uh, the methodology, the technology you can use to analyze those elemental impurities uh, for this uh, quality of product. So all are defined in different guidelines we have shown here in this slide. Moving further, why the element need assessment? So you know that uh, the heavy metals and some other metals are naturally present in earth crust. So from the earth crust, the plants absorb these uh, heavy metals and nutrients. So how the, the uh, food products are getting contaminated. You know the water, there are different natural sources of water and water is getting contaminated from soil. And the water is a main solvent we use for different processing. So food processing in pharmaceutical industry and different industry, this water used as a solvent. So through this water, the, uh, the products getting contaminated. And if you know that like east, northeast coast, you will find more arsenic in the soil. So even this, uh, this arsenic may uh, present in seafood and fish, also high in very high in soil. Uh, so from the pollute, pollutions from uh, the soil, from industrial waste and all soil is getting contaminated and all these heavy metals uh, like contaminate the soil. Some of the metals like uh, selenium, zinc, copper, these are the nutrients which are required for human metabolism at trace level. When these elements, all these heavy metals present at higher concentration and we consume it for long time, causes poisoning and long term exposure, it causes uh, disease like cancer, kidney failure or many other diseases. So that's why the assessment, the testing of these metals are uh, need to be done in different kind of products. So what are the challenges in testing? So if you have different kind of samples, you will go how to proceed for the analysis. So you will find there are different type, variety of samples, variety of matrices available, which contains so many elements. So the level of elements varies from PPP level to percentage level from sample to sample. So it is very critical job 
to develop method for because there is no single method available for all the products and you need to optimize you need to only validate method for different matrix samples and nowadays you know new and evolving regulations are coming uh, with this the whatever toxic metals are mentioned are the limits are more stringent so we need to select the technology uh, which gives you better detection limit as per the regulation so we need the sensitivity accuracy and speed of analysis so along with all these things you also consider the operation cost so if you operate any instrument it requires some consumable so those consumables are expensive and you need to see what are the cost of the consumable and how you can reduce or minimize the cost of uh, instrument to analyze samples so you know there are three major techniques uh, used for elemental impurities and the as is very long technique almost in 1960s people have started using this technique in as basically it is based on absorption principle and in as we have two techniques as flame where the atomization source is flame and uh, you can do the elements at ppm level because of certain interferences you know you may not able to do lower concentration in ppp so for ppp we use graphite furnace which is where the elements are atomized by electrically heated tube the next icpoes inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy he which is based on emission technique and the elements are getting atomized using high temperature plasma and the elements emit their characteristic light which is which are scanned by the spectrometer and then we detect on detector different detectors are used in icpoes and if you want to go at very lower level normally we prepared icpms it is uh, based on plasma technique and quadrupolar used here so when the samples are injecting or aspirated in plasma it forms a ion singly charged ion the singly charged ions uh, we are uh, filtering with the help of quadrupoles uh, with the help of the icpms we can achieve very lower detection limit in ppts and ppps ppps so what is basic principle of uh, spectroscopy you know every element has specific number of electrons associated with its nucleus the normal and most stable configuration of atom known as brown state when you aspirate any sample uh, at high temperature it forms atom so if you consider atomic spectroscopy in atomic spectroscopy absorption spectroscopy with a flame or graphite furnace as atomization source so at the temperature the elements or the electrons forms ground state atom so here we use halo cathode lamp and the light characteristic wavelength of element we pass on the flame the element absorb light and you get the absorbance so here in atomic absorption we measure the absorbance uh, in the sample when the temperature is high like in icpoes where we use a plasma so at high temperature this ground state electron get a gets gets excited and uh, when it is get excited uh, at uh, at very less time it will come back to ground state and emit the light so in icpoes we measure emission spectra and uh, in icpms again the plasma is a source of atomization and ionization so the in ionization stage what happen uh, when this electron escape the orbit it forms it gives you positively charged ion the positively charged ion entered into the quadrupole and we scan the element filter the element as per their mass to charge ratio uh in if you, if you see the detection limit so different technologies have different detection limits so when you select uh, any technique you need to see what are the uh, guidelines you are following and what are the limits you have mentioned and what are the detection limits of instrument if you see the flame flame is almost you get uh, the concentration in ppm ppm level if you want to do very lower level you have to change over for graphite furnace and you can do analysis in ppp lower ppp levels Uh, then in icpoes uh, the range is very wide so you can do in ppm and you can also go at very higher concentration maybe 500 ppm or 1000 ppm in axial view you can achieve very lower detection limits in 1 ppb less than 1 ppb you can achieve so icpoes is basically simultaneous technique in which you can do lower concentration and high concentration in a single run 
mostly the icpms icpms detection limits are very lower and it is preferred for very lower concentration because the instrument is highly sensitive so almost you can go up to 1 ppt or less than that using icpms so this is what detection limit difference between all these technologies then selecting a technique for your analysis uh, when you go for analysis when you select the technique whether it is fas or gfas icpms and icpms different criteria are involved in the selection detection limit you need to see whether the detection limits are capable to do on this technology or not analytical working range so you always prefer to have a higher analytical working range if your samples contains lower and higher concentration in a single sample then you can do single in a single run all these elements uh, other than this sample throughput is also very important because if you have many samples to do many elements you want to do in short time then always prefer to do this analysis in very fast system so sample throughput is very important then after analysis what are data quality you get the accuracy that also you consider while selecting the method the instrument should be easy to use easy to operate and again the cost matters when you select the technology moving to atomic absorption as is based on absorption principle and uh, it is based on beer's law so here the concentration is proportional to absorbance so whatever sample sample should be liquid form the sample solution we spread in a flame using nebulizer so the elements get atomized and ground state atoms form here then externally from the halo cathode lamp we pass the light the characteristic uh, characteristic light of light uh, characteristic wavelength of the element you want to analyze that light falls on the flame and the ground state atom absorb the light and the remaining light get transmitted here so here we measure the absorbance absorbed light by the elements so different wavelengths characteristic wavelengths are available for different element which are specific to that element only so all this wavelength data are mentioned in the software uh, in as we which as you are using so you can see multiple wavelengths of uh, multiple wavelengths for uh, different elements uh, the example of lead you can see the different wavelengths of lead are given here but all wavelengths are not sensitive there are only few wavelengths which are highly sensitive and you can select for your analysis here for lead 283 is a wavelength which is highly sensitive then 217 also you can use for analysis other other wavelengths are not sensitive if you are interested at very higher concentration then you can select this technique but other than this you need also you need to also see what are the interferences to the these wavelengths comparing flame and furnace so you know the flame is uh, like uh, used for high ppm level or ppm level analysis and because of some interferences from the flame you cannot do very lower concentration so for graphite furnace is used for ppp level analysis so if you see the run time so run time in flame it is very fast so you can uh, you can do single element within 3 to 5 second apart depend on the integration time in furnace it takes 2 to 3 minutes because we need to destroy the matrix form sample you need to run furnace program the sample required uh, is more in flame as and in graphite furnace it takes only up to 100 microliter of sample so when you select the technique you also need to see what is the sample quantity available with you then interferences so there are some interferences are available uh, when you do analysis of flame uh, chemical interferences ionization interferences matrix interferences so those all these interferences we remove in graphite furnace using stpf concept so what is stpf concept that i will explain you when discussing the graphite furnace uh, then detection limits are in ppm and sub ppm using flame and in graphite furnace it is ppp and sub ppp so you know all this uh, like a selection of the this flame or furnace are different on the samples you want to analyze so we have heard about the maggie and like there was an issue in maggie lead was found so uh, the lead was very trace level and to achieve that kind of concentration we may prefer furnace technique or icpms technique so depend on the uh, concentration of analyte in your sample you can choose the technology this is the picture of instrument uh, this is perkin elmer instrument uh, uh, where we have integrated flame and graphite furnace 
so in as uh, at a time you can do a single element so when you want to change from flame to graphite furnace so this is graphite furnace you have to align the graphite furnace and you can perform the analysis so this is how the lamps looks actually so there are coded lamps and non coded lamps are available or uh, you can fix here so automatically the instrument sense which are the lamps are there and automatically ignite the lamp, uh, switch on the lamp and you get the this is called the spectrometer component diagram which involve the atomizer whether it is flame or graphite furnace depending on your sample this is the lamp source and lamp light passes on this and then we have monochromator monochromator is called as a heart of instrument because if the role of monochromator is to separate the wavelength and they select the wavelength which you want and the wavelength falls on the detector so different detectors are used here in as pmt or solid state detector then uh, you uh, so whole instrument is under software control so many safety interlocks are given to the as the process in flame so whenever uh, you uh, aspirate sample the sample should be in liquid form so this sample is getting aspirated in flame and getting atomized using the sample induction system how the sample induction system it's like this the sample induction system should be corrosion resistant and should be easy to access when you aspirate sample the sample getting aspirated using nebulizer and form spray here the fine size droplets get introduced into the flame vaporization and atomization happens if uh, you are doing some uh, alkali metals which are easy to ionize it may go in ionic state so this happens so sample inter system having different compartments like a cassette where you have you can connect the nebulizer spray chamber should be corrosion resistant spray spray chamber and you have burner head so which is titanium burner head and then different types of nebulizers are available according to your sample if sample are more acidic uh, may contain hydrochloric acid then you have to use hf resistant nebulizer like this the capillary is teflon if you want uh, if you do not have hydrochloric acid and if you want more sensitivity then high sensitivity plastic nebulizer available with platinum iridium so many type of nebulizers are available uh, with all manufacturers you can use as per your samples as per your analysis basically there are two flames are available which are used in air for atomization air acid flame which has temperature almost up to 2300 degree centigrade so almost most of the elements are getting atomized at this flame like a copper lead manganese cadmium magnesium etc some of the elements like are not getting atomized so this air acetyl flame required 10 cm burner head you can also use 5 cm burner head for as air acetyl flame but for more sensitivity we use we prefer 10 cm burner head so for our, for some of the element like like refractory forming element aluminum barium boron vanadium silicon these are not getting atomized properly at air acetyl flame so for them we need to use high temperature nitrous oxide acetyl flame the temperature is almost 2700 degree centigrade so for this flame we use 5 cm burner head and if you see the size of flame is huge so it is blue flame and having pink feather almost 2 to 3 cm above just burner head so you need to get this pink feather so that optimum temperature you get and elements get properly atomized moving further the halo cathode lamps so there are different lamps are available uh, uh, here in as so mostly if you see most of the elements having halo cathode lamp this halo cathode lamps is a cylinder glass cylinder having quartz window and neon or argon gas is filled here and it has cathode and anode this cathode is made up of metal for you want light suppose if you want copper to analyze if you want copper wavelength so this cathode is uh, made up of the copper metal uh, some of the elements like a mercury selenium phosphorus uh, these elements uh, you don't get much energy uh, with halo cathode lamps so this this energy can be improved by using electrode less discharge lamp so you get almost double energy with electrode uh, discharge lamp which are highly sensitive where the metal or metal salt is filled into the bulb and uh, this bulb is surrounded by rf coil so rf frequency we apply to uh, this uh, because of that the elements get atomized uh, properly and you get more intensity of light so how the halo cathode lamp works so uh, as i told you this halo cathode lamp has cathode and anode when you apply electrical potential the neon gas field in this lamp uh, get ionized and the positively charged ions are getting 
attracted towards the cathode and then it gives the atom metal atom so this process is called as putrid process and then this metal atom again he uh, bombarded with uh, uh, heat with some electrons and again it goes to excited state and you know the excited state is unstable this uh, this atom come back to ground state and emit the light so how the lamp is glowing like this so according to uh, the gas field you the lamp is getting glow so here this is a this is the window has captured from software after igniting plasma you get the energy so this energy whatever you get it should be stable yeah, so sometimes you need to arm of the lamp for maybe 1 minute 2 minutes or 5 minute depending on the element so that you get stable energy so after absorption in flame the light get transmitted and this light passes into the monochromator so monochromator has entrance lit exit lit and the grating so what happened in uh, this uh, entrance lit allow the light into the monochromator system optical system and then which has multiple wavelength and it falls on the grating so grating is very important uh, it it do the separation of different wavelength and the selected wavelength you, which you want which you are analyzing that is selected by exit lead so exit lead is variable so according to the interference according to your sample you can change it so that you get more precise result you get more uh, good rst so after this the light falls on the detector so detector converts light energy into electrical energy so mainly there are two types of detectors are used most of the instrument you will find the pmt uh, in which we have photocathode so this uh, uh, this electrons are heated to this one and then get multiplied multiplication happens and the signal is getting magnified and you get a reading so uh, some of the manufacturer they use solid state cmos detector so it is basically a silicon semiconductor device having silicon vapor the light heat to silicon and accordingly um, uh, movement of hole and electrons you get the energy so what is different between these two detectors is the quantum efficiency of solid state detector is high because of this higher quantum efficiency uh, the signal to noise ratio is very lower uh, compared to pmt uh, then moving to the graphite furnace so uh, you know there are some uh, challenges to, because of some interferences we cannot do lower concentration in flame so the graphite furnace is preferred for this analysis where we have used stpf concept stabilized temperature platform furnace concept so which which knows pyrotically coated graphite tube so this kind of pyrotically coated high pure graphite is used which is kept in a which is kept in a furnace graphite furnace and it is electrically heated to atomize the analyte so it has yellow platform so with yellow platform or without yellow platform also tubes are available so normally we prepare this platform tube so that sample get uh, vaporized properly immediately and you get very sharp peak so rapid furnace sitting happens means from the ambient temperature you can within one second you can achieve the atomization temperature of element so the organ gas is filled here as a carrier uh, then matrix modifiers are used in graphite to for some of the elements to stabilize the elements so uh, to you get more sensitivity then gas stopping uh, stop during atomization so when atomization uh, time came so when it is doing atomization so this organ gas gets stopped here and you get stable value with that and after this atomization the gas get clean out and remove the contamination then fast signal processing and we do the measurement by peak by area or peak by height so this is what uh, because of that we are able to achieve lower concentrations in graphite furnace as so what is the process in graphite furnace so uh, the auto sampler is used to inject sample which is capable to inject 1 microliter solution to up to 30 microliter solution or 74.99 so uh, depend on the configuration it gets vary so this auto sampler inject sample in graphite tube and then atomization happens due to electrical heating and here the uh, here because the atomization happens more effectively because whatever temperature is required according to the elements we can apply that temperature and because of this proper temperature elements get atomized efficiently and you get high sensitivity in flame normally uh, there is no exact temperature temperature is varying in a flame so that's why you don't get uh, efficiency good efficiency in a flame technique so then it uh, introduces the monochromator and detector and you get peaks in graphite furnace 
So different type of graphite furnaces are used here. A uh, different manufacturer of different graphite furnace. So THGA is a transfer limited graphite uh, furnace is available, and THGA which is massive type of furnace which has cylindrical tube. So what is difference between these two? Is this THGA furnace? Are having two uh, sides, so the heat is introduced through from the four side, and that's why the temperature required here in THGA furnace is less compared to this HGA. In HGA, you need to give higher temperature so that the temperature should reach to the uh, solution and the elements get atomized. So you will find this different temperature difference between THGA and HGA. Uh, again, this uh, this THG and HG are both having this platform, uh, so that you get very good signal. You can see the difference without platform and with platform. But for certain element like a boron, maybe silicon, you may need to use this graphite tube without platform to get uh, more sensitivity uh, to atomize elements properly. Uh, here. I have just given example like a like a mercury in drinking water mercury limit is 1 ppb or you can see the lead limit is 10 ppb so when you are doing in graphite furnace so sometimes you may not able to achieve that detection limit so you, you, you may have to go for icpms so that you can do in pp level concentration but if you have a, a graphite furnace so what you can do it can do the pre concentration in graphite tube you can do multiple injection in graphite tube and samples getting dry and then uh, applying atomization temperature you can get more sensitivity you can see here i have done three injections of uh, sample uh, standard and got and able to achieve very lower concentration almost 0.6 ppb. This is what the uh, concentration or calibration standards use for analysis, and these are the calculated concentration against the calibration graph. So you can see almost from 0.6 uh, pp, uh, ppb to 4 ppb, the calibration was performed. So in the graphite tube also you can use to achieve very lower concentration, whatever you are getting on ICPMS to as per the limit you are following. So hydride techniques, hydride techniques is most suitable for hydride forming elements. Some of the elements like a mercury, arsenic, selenium, antimony, bismuth, tellurium, these are the hydride forming elements. So those elements can be done at very lower detection limit hydride kit. So this hydride uh, instrument is coupled to the uh, atomic absorption spectrometer. So what process we do here, it is mentioned here. So for hydride formation, we use sodium borohydrate. So sodium borohydrate and sample solution uh, it runs into the mixing loop using peristatic pump precisely. So the sodium borohydrate, it is in uh, alkaline pH and we use SCL acid or nitric acid and then sample. So what happened when it is mixing together in this loop? So it comes in acidic pH and acidic pH is sodium borohydrate react to arsenic or mercury and it forms hydride gas. The reaction I have mentioned here, so you can see arsenic hydride form which is in gaseous state. Now, the liquid which is waste will get drained off here to waste. Only the hydride gas, metal hydride gas, getting introduced into the cell. You can do the analysis at 5 ppb level or 1 ppb level using hydride coupled to AS. There are certain limitations uh, like uh, when you want to do the analysis of mercury or certain elements. So in graphite furnace, you may not able to achieve 1 ppb. In graphite furnace, if you see mercury, you can do up to 25 ppb only. If you are using hydride, in hydride also, you get 1 ppb or 0.8 ppb concentration using hydride. But what is what you will do if you want to do in PPT's level? So there is an option in AS, you can couple this hydride technique to the graphite furnace. So what we'll do here, so this hydride gas then introduced into the graphite tube having iridium chloride as a matrix, we use a matrix modifier and then, uh, then hydride elements are getting deposited there and due to this uh, you are getting higher sensitivity. Here is a comparison, you can see uh, with the hydride kit what absorbance you are, you are getting, it is less than 0 0.05 absorber. But if you do this analysis using hydride and graphite furnace, the sensitivity improves. I have performed some analysis using uh, this hydride and furnace coupling, and you can see I was able to achieve 
0.25 ppb means 250 ppb ppt concentration further i can go up to 100 ppb ppt of mercury using hydride and furnace so you can see the peaks are very sharp here and uh, the mercury i got calibration for 0.25 ppb 0.5 ppb and 1 ppb similar uh, for arsenic i got 0 0.25 0 0.5 and 1 ppb so this uh, this note is uh, published and it is available in google if you uh, if you type uh, the class 12 elements uh, as per USP 230, uh, 232, then you will find this uh, application in Google, Google for detailed information. Then what are the interferences are involved in IC, uh, AS? So if you consider the flame as there are chemical interferences, ionization interferences, and matrix interferences. So uh, to, uh, to avoid the matrix interference, so normally we do by method of standard addition or we can matrix match your standard as per the acid contained in your samples or uh, different technique like, a, uh, like a for chemical interferences. You may have to go for high temperature or you add some like a modifier, some salt you add to improve the sensitivity and the ionization interference normally you face from alkali metal that can be controlled by adding some easily ionizable salt like a lanthanum or cesium you can add. So in a graphite furnace normally we don't face this kind of interferences because of STPF concept. So non-specific absorbance. So these are the interference which are normally you get because of some unwanted material, unwanted, uh, unwanted components available with your sample. So this unwanted material absorb the light from the lamp and you get some uh, extra values. Okay, so this can be corrected using two techniques, continuum, uh, continuum source of background correction using tutorium lamp and Siemens background correction. These are the two uh, background correction techniques are available in AS. So you can select as per your sample. So most of the like a long branch in compound and worst samples like a geological sample, we use uh, the Zeeman background uh, instrument and for uh, like a clean sample, so the matrix is less. For that you can go for this continuous source of background correction. So how it works, I'm not going in detail because there's a lot of uh, detailed information available with uh, THG and HG, how it is working. So just I'm explaining how it is working. When it is it is uh, happening in sequentially so what happened when the lamp light is passing on flame this uh, deuterium lamp, lamp light get blocked here so what happened the lamp light get absorbed by analyte as well as some unwanted compounds and you get uh, the absorbance like this in next stage what happened uh, this instrument block the light from halo cathode lamp only this tutorium lamp light which has wavelength range from 185 to 400 and it passes on the flame here in this case only the unwanted compounds mostly it is a molecular oxide and all so this absorb the light background light and you get absorbance for only background so if you subtract this from this you get corrected value for your analyte uh, concentration so in this way it is working for Zeeman we use a magnetic field here and with the help of magnetic field we are doing this split, splitting here of the uh, uh, spectral lines and then this and then the background is getting measured and so here they it is switching from lamp on and lamp uh, sorry magnet on and magnet off so accordingly it is doing correction and similar way you get background corrected values yeah. so i have given a, one example of how to perform the analysis on flame technique so this is the example fuel oil was done on flame as for the elements like vanadium nickel sodium and iron so if you see the this sample oil sample uh, is dissolved in b sol solvent it is almost a kerosene grade solvent it was it was dissolved by 5% on 10% and the calibration was performed calibration standards are prepared in the same solvent so oil standards uh, were used for this and calibration graph was plot for 0.5 mg per kg uh, 2.5 and 10 similar way it was done for vanadium so you can see uh, nickel sodium and iron these are sensitive on air acid flame so these are the wavelength so these elements are done uh, on air acid flame Vanadium, it is refractory for being element, so required high temperature flame. So it was done on nitrous oxide flame to achieve the sensitivity. So if you want to change over from acetylene uh, then to uh, nitrous oxide, you need to change burner rate and you have to optimize flame and then you can do the analysis. 
this was what analytical results observed this was the reference uh, certified uh, material was done and these are the values got for different elements and with two different replicates and you can see the recovery percentage recovery almost within 90 to 110 percent uh, the detection limit test was performed by aspirating plan and it was calculated with the standard deviation and these are the mdls observed for iron nickel sodium and vanadium now if you see the vanadium now vanadium sensitivity is less so that's why in nitrous oxide flame, if you see the refractory elements, it is very challenging to do in PPP levels. You cannot do. So, uh, so there are certain limitations when you do this refractory element. There are certain detection limits. So beyond that, uh, means below that, you cannot perform the analysis. This is how the nitrous oxide flame looks. So you may have to optimize the flame condition so that you get more sensitivity. And this is what the system should be totally corrosion resistant because we are doing different kind of acid, different kind of matrix. One more example I have given for graphite furnace analysis. Uh, the lead was done in blood sample. So you know what is the advantage of graphite furnace? In graphite furnace, you can inject viscous samples. So if you see ICPS and ICPMS, if you want to do blood sample, you have to give multiple dilution. You have to give 100 times dilution or 200 times dilution. So in graphite furnace, you cannot do more dilution because you can you may not be able to achieve the detection limit, whatever you require. So here, the Triton X100 or use as a, as a modifier here, along with sodium uh, uh, hydrogen phosphate is a modifier. This is just to use stabilize the sample solution added Triton X100 and the calibration standards we have prepared for 0 0.5, 1, 3 and 30 microgram per dl. So 1 microgram per dl means almost 10 ppp concentration. So sample was diluted by 10 times. I have taken 100 microliter of sample and 900 microliter of this matrix modifier solution means this rinse solution or uh, the diluent and prepared the samples. So this was the uh, uh, instrument, uh, instrumentation paragraph, uh, parameters used for the analysis at 283 wavelength. So this program was optimized to get more precise value. This is what the furnace program I was used for analysis of this blood sample. So you have flexibility in graphite furnace so you can optimize the temperature so that you get higher sensitivity, lower background and more accurate uh, results. So this is what data. Uh, so you can see here the different peaks for standard and sample. And the calibration graph I got uh, for this up to 3 micro three micro per DL. And this is what the uh, raw data. So you can see here the calibration was done from 0.5 to 3 microgram per dl and these are the calculated values okay if you want to go further lower so you can do the pre concentration and you can achieve the concentration in ppt so this application note also available in google uh, this was the, uh, published by me uh, for the elemental analysis of lead in uh, blood using graphite furnace as so this was about the graphite furnace and as so uh, so, you know, the graphite furnace and AS, you can do a single element at a time. So, if you have a few samples, if you have few, few elements, then mostly the graphite furnace or AS are preferred. But if you want to do many elements, more than 20 or more than 40, so it will take time to perform analysis on AS. So, for that, we prefer ICPOS and ICPMS. So, ICPMS is emission technique which is rapid and multi-element analysis technique where you can do all elements together in a single run. So what are the ICP characteristics? Uh, Multi-elements you can do with the spectral range according to the manufacturer and then you can almost do more than 70 elements uh, very quickly. So it is high speed instrument. Uh, the oil or uh, this atomizer or ionization source atomization source used here is a organ so which is inert so you get very lower background here the sample get destroyed properly so detection limits uh, normally you get in ppp's level so it is highly sensitive for refractory elements as well where you will find the issue in air so refractory elements you don't get that sensitivity but here because of higher temperature you are able to do in ppp level this refractory element then the dynamic range is very wide uh, in ICPOS. You can do analysis from PPP level. So you can go 100 ppm or 1000 ppm, depending on the view you are selecting. The spectral interferences are there uh, in ICPOS that can be controlled by software here or by selecting different wavelengths. 
So all ICQS mostly you'll find DLV system, Excel view and Radial view. With the help of that, you can do trace level elements in Excel and higher concentration in Radial. How the instrument looks? This is Perkin Elmer ICP OES. Moving next, uh, the instrument. So the whole instrument is under software control. Uh, we have uh, shipped uh, many uh, interlocks here. So the pump is there, peristatic pump. We aspirate the liquid using nebulizer and spray chamber into the plasma. So for plasma generation, we need a RF generator here. And then uh, the light after atomization, the light get uh, introduced into spectrometer by axial view and radial view. So it can be done in a single run. So you can do lower and higher concentration together. And detector is used in a solid state detector. Different detectors are used uh, by different manufacturer. And it converts the uh, light signal into electrical signal and you get readings in counts per second. So what is a plasma? So plasma is highly ionized organ gas where the torch, the concentric torch, here which is made up of cords so and this cords is surrounded by RF coil yeah so here we apply RF power and due to this RF power RF power uh, this uh, uh, so we are radio frequency we supply to the this one and uh, when ignition happens so we give spark here and due to spark uh, due to this electromagnetic field the elements are getting ionized and uh, having movement and multiplication of ions and atoms happen and you get stabilized plasma like this one so there are different RF generator are used uh, by different manufacturer uh, this is the coil uh, which is uh, RF coil and which is connected to the RF generator. So normally 27 megahertz and 40 megahertz RF generator available. Uh, this is the again RF generator which is made up of some aluminium uh, corrosion resistant alloy. So this is normally uh, used to ignite the plasma. So when you are igniting plasma, the instrument should be capable to give you very robust plasma so that you get very good atomization or ionization and you get more sensitivity. So what is the process in plasma? So different temperature zones are available in plasma. When you aspirate sample, the sample getting aspirated, it passes through this injector and getting introduced into plasma, high temperature plasma, which contain organ plus and an electron. So dissolution, vaporization, and then atomization happens, and uh, some of the elements get ionized, and excitation happens, and you get uh, readings uh, for those elements which are present. So when you do the aspiration, so aspiration is very important because the sensitivity is depend on how the aspiration happens. So different uh, the different sampling inter systems are available for different kind of sample. This is the concentric kit uh, which is uh, which is having a quartz nebulizer, a glass spray chamber, a quartz spray chamber, and the sample getting aspirated. But if your samples are highly alkaline solution or containing some hydrochloric acid, you cannot use this. So there you can use HF resistant kit, different like uh, this is some Brighton polymer is used. Uh, there are Teflon material also available. So what happens here in nebulizer, sample from uh, inlet tube comes here in this side and the organ gas comes and this will come together and getting sprayed. So according to your sample matrix, whether it is highly pure and what is the matrix present, so you need to select different nebulizers for different samples. So this is just example of cross flow nebulizer and this is the concentric nebulizer. The ICPOES uh, like uh, measure the elements uh, in dual view. So basically the system is axially and radial view. So that selection you can uh, do in method. So which elements you feel like higher concentration, you can select them for radial view, which you want to measure in trace level, you can select axial view. So how it is working from the plasma, light goes axially because here the path length uh, is more, so more light passes through axial and you get more sensitivity. Radial view, it is in 90 degree, it is almost tenfold less than axial view and you are able to do trace level and higher concentration in a single run with this IC -pulogias. After this, uh, hot, from the plasma water emission lights are coming, it may, uh, Sachin, it may contain many Sachin, Sachin, Yeah. Sachin, yeah. sorry for the interruption, just for the advantage of the people who are attending. I think it is important, it may be interesting to say what is the temperature of the plasma. It's around yeah. 7,000, 7,500 degrees. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The temperature of plasma is vary from almost 6,000 degree Kelvin to 10,000 degree Kelvin. But normal, the atomization temperature is 6,500. Yeah. So the atomization happens at temperature and the elements uh, with their characteristic light. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, yeah. Then whatever wavelengths are coming, because your sample may have multiple wavelengths. So at the same time, the multiple wavelengths may emit multiple wavelengths. If you see uh, the if you see the wavelength for copper, there are almost more than 500 wavelengths are available. But all wavelengths are not uh, sensitive wavelengths, so no use. Only five to six wavelengths are available, which are sensitive for each uh, each element. So what happened? The bunch of wavelengths then uh, introduced into optical system, and which is going to fall on detector. So before detector, we need to do filtration. We need to separate all these wavelengths. So grating is used here. So this grating, you know, having small small view views here, which is capable to disperse all the wavelength spectra and the selected wavelengths. Then it falls on the detector and getting scanned for the wavelength. So the optical resolution should be good. Most of the ICPs having resolution 0.007 nanometer, so you get very good spectra, good separation of wavelength. And because the spectral interference is major issue in ICP based because of the emission of wavelength, wavelength that can be controlled by software or selecting the proper wavelengths. Other detector, so uh, detector used in ICPS is solid state detector. Uh, different manufacturer used uh, different kind of different design, maybe CCD, CID kind of detector use. Or uh, the detail is different as per the manufacturer, but it is basically a uh, semiconductor uh, silicon device. So what happened? The light, so it has small small pixels. So pixels may vary from 200 pixels to 4 4000 pixels. So it is varying according to instrument. So what happens? The light is falling on semiconductor highly sensitive area uh, on the detector, and then you know, like uh, it is the uh, silicon silicon bond gets break. The number of light, the amount of light is falling on the detector surface. So according to movement of hole and electrons, you, you get the intensity of light. So detector is normally uh, cooled at very lower temperature, almost from minus 8 degrees centigrade to 40 degrees centigrade or minus 45 degrees centigrade to stabilize it. Uh, the optics basically, uh, you will find two kind of optics in AS, dual monochromator based optics and polychromator uh, based optics. So this polychromator based optics is basically uh, need to stabilize almost for one hour or uh, to get stabilized values to avoid the drift in the wavelength. Uh, in dual, dual, so this, that's why the first stabilization is takes one hour. In dual monochromator or monochromator based system, you need not have to stabilize the uh, instrument because uh, the dynamic wavelength stabilization will new, using neon, uh, which corrects the drift. So it is basically cold start instrument and you can start the analysis very quickly. So, but uh, this polychromator uh, system are high speed instrument compared to dual monochromator system. The dual monochromator system is carrying the element almost uh, very fast from 0.2 uh, seconds to uh, 1 second or more than that. So you can optimize method for that. So the dual monochromator basically uh, what you get, you get higher sensitivity compared to polychromator based system. So this is the difference in uh, polychromator and dual monochromator. With this hydride kit, you can also use hydride kit on ic years like uh, mercury, arsenic, selenium. These are very difficult at 1 ppb level uh, on ic years. So if you want to perform at 1 ppb or below that, you can use hydride kit. It is similar, similar like a AS hydride kit, where the sodium borohydride and the sample makes in sample loop, and this is the gas liquid separator where the liquid waste is getting drained off, and only hydride gas metals get introduced into the plasma, and you get more accuracy, more lower detection limits. So I told you about spectral interference. So what is spectral interference? Because of because of multiple wavelengths. Uh, coming in uh, optics, so one element can interfere to on another element. So this is the example of uh, phosphorus. The phosphorus is interfered by copper. Now what happened here? If uh, you are doing phosphorus, so because of this interference, you may get false value. So this can be corrected by spectral correction technique like uh, MSF or IC MSF uh, is multi-element spectral fitting. So here, what we do normally? We aspirate blank, we aspirate uh, analyte. Analyte in the sense, whatever interferent uh, is there, so you need to prepare the standard of interferent and then you need to aspirate. So what software does, software subtract this whole peak of phosphorus and copper, subtract the, this copper peak from this whole peak and you get corrected value. 
so you can see uh, like a lower concentration almost up to less than 100 ppp was done by this firm so uh, multi level spectral fitting so i see msa for different spectral fitting techniques are available in software so if you want to go at very lower concentration then uh, the example of uh, uh, analysis of soil of micronutrients in icqis so this was uh, done uh, for uh, using icqis using uh, concentrated nebulizer so what was done actually the sample soil sample was digested in micro digester uh, this is what the micro digester program was used so here with the micro digester we are able to do more uh, elements like a mercury arsenic at lower concentration and it is fully automatic system so 1 gram of sample taken and then after digestion it was diluted to 50 gram or you can dilute to 50 ml this was what instrumentation diagram or uh, instrumentation parameters were used for analysis it was done all done by Maynard nebulizer and glass cyclone spray chamber these are the plasma parameters were used so if, here in icqs organ is a consumable so we need to set the organ gas flow in the software and get the ignition of plasma and your plasma should be more robust accordingly you may have to optimize the plasma parameter so this is what you get actually in icqs you are able to do multiple elements in a single run from lower concentrations to higher concentration you can see here almost the value of uh, aluminium is 500 ppm and if you see barium it is 5 ppm and copper it is 300 ppb so like a different different values you can do in a single run simultaneously on icpos uh, the sample was done uh, for validation using spike recovery and you can see the spike recovery observed almost near to 100% then moving to uh, ICP MS, so the plasma because ICPS is based on emission technique. There are also because from the metric from the plasma you get some interferences, light interferences, so that you are not able to go in PPT levels. So as per different regulations like uh, USP guidelines, so the limits of uh, inhalation drug, uh, parenteral drugs are very lower, which cannot be done on ICP years. So for those you can go for ICPMS. So ICPMS is analytical technique that ionizes the chemical spaces and sort the ion based on their mass to charge ratio. So already I have explained you this when the uh, sample solution getting aspirated into plasma. Yeah, then electron may elute the orbit and if it is eluting orbit you may get positively charged you may get positively charged uh, ion. So this positively charged ion then introduced in the quadrupole system. The quadrupole system scans the elements as per their mass to charge ratio and then you get readings in detector. Detector is EMT, electron multiplier tube. So this ICPMS has two sections, ICP plasma and mass spectrometer. So you know when you when you do analysis in ICP MS, so you need to select isotopes. So single element uh, may have different isotopes. This is the example. So what is isotopes having same number of proton and uh, different number of uh, neutrons? So the, for copper you have 63 and 65 isotope. So you can select the isotope which has more abundance. And if you want to select both isotopes, that also do in a software and you can analyze a copper or different elements this is how the icpms looks it is benchmark model and you can operate uh, the instrument uh, with uh, auto sampler and automatic sample injection happens so you can leave as it is for overnight because the organ gas is used in icqs and icpms so it is not like a flammable gas and you can leave the instrument uh, to operate automatic sample analysis this is what the uh, instrument diagram, different components. So like uh, ICPOS, we have sampling inter system and the plasma. And after the plasma, the ion beam entering into the optical system by vacuum. So we use vacuum pump here and this is the interface. So here plasma is touching to the cones and from the, uh, from the orifice, the ion beam is entering into the quadrupole system for scanning. So and then it falls on the detector which is electron multiplier tube converts the energy into electrical signal and you get uh, the sensitivity or counts in uh, counts per second pattern. Uh, this is what the plasma, it is similar like ICQOES, uh, the role of plasma to ionize element and to give you single charge ion. Then the charge ion are introduced through this uh, nickel cones or platinum cones and getting sand scanned by the quadrupole. 
So what did the process happen when we uh, in plasma? So your nebulizer is capable to give very fine droplets. If you get fine droplets, maximum sample get utilized for analysis. So vaporization happens and you get a molecule and because of higher energy electron further it's great break it form a cerium oxide this is just cerium, cerium oxide i have given example because it is highly ionizing element and then you get finally singly charged particles so your plasma should able so capable to give single charge ion so that quadrupole can scan because quadrupole was on mass to charge ratio if you are getting uh, if the cerium is in cerium oxide form the mass is different so you will not we may not able to scan the cerium using icps so your plasma should optimize so that you get single charge particle or single charge ion so now from the plasma water beam is ion beam is coming it is contain positive charge ions and then neutral particles so for this neutral particles we need to remove from the ion beam so extraction lens or some quadrupole ion deflectors are used to remove these particles and you can see some uh, like a voltage supply here and this uh, this ion be positively charged ion which are required was to analysis are entered into the quadrupole system the new are getting removed here so what happened so here you are removing the interferences from your sample from the your analytes so then now whatever ion beam are entering into the optics that ion beam having positive charge ion which are required to ionize with that some of the elements may not get ionized or it may react with different uh, analyte and may form some polyatomic interferences this is just example i have given like uh, these are different elements we have so these elements are getting introduced into the mass filter so the mass filter scans the element as per their mass to charge ratio so you can see here different elements having different masses and getting filters scanning very fast using this mass quadrupole and uh, getting analyzed so sometimes what happen now this is example this orange and apple having same mass okay so this quadrupole in a sense that so if you just scanning the mass so what happened because of this interferences suppose or you want to analyze apple and because of same mass is orange may interference so before reaching the analytes to quadrupole here in between these two you need to remove this orange you need to remove this polyatomic interferences so different techniques are used here to remove those interferences so you can see in periodic table uh, different elements you have different interferences so uh, here i have shown only important elements uh, which normally we do i give an example of arsenic arsenic you know the mass is 75 and here in plasma we use argon gas and if your sample may contain chloride so chloride may come from acids if you have hydrochloric acid if you have food sample geological sample soil sample so of course chloride is present so you get organ chloride which has 75 mass organ is 40 chloride is 35 so it is 75 so in your sample if this organ chloride is more so an arsenic is not present but because of this organ chloride you may get some readings false value so that's why this interference polyatomic interference or isobaric interference is we need to remove uh, in this slide i have given the example how it is happening so we use collision uh, technique and react to remove the interferences collision technique is based on the size of analyte now what happened this is a drc cell reaction cell where this analyte which is chromium having 52 mass and this argon carbon having 52 mass so what is difference between two they are having same mass but if it is the size size is vary so argon carbon has big size so what happen we introduce here a helium inside this cell so the head which has very smaller size now when it is entering into the uh, cell it will more heat to the bigger size molecule so here we are changing the kinetic energy of argon carbon and then argon carbon is getting removed here in cell so chromium also may affect due to this one but not like argon carbon so sometimes 10% or 20% uh, of chromium uh, this will get removed here and then but it will not impact like argon chloride it will easily pass through the cell and enter into the quadrupole so quadrupole is scan only chromium so in this way using collision gases like a helium you can remove the polyatomic interferences now if uh, the interference size is bigger and your analyte smaller uh, size is smaller then you can use kd mode it will hit to argon chloride and it will get removed if your analyte size and interference size is same that also it will work but now if the interference size is smaller 
and your analyte size is bigger so what will happen this helium will hit more to the calcium and your analyte of interest will get removed so in this case the kd mode doesn't work there you need reaction cell so in reaction cell we use a different reactive gases like oxygen methane hydrogen or many other reactive gases can be used for so these gases are mostly preferred so here what we are doing here we are changing the chemical property of interference or analyte so you can see charge transfer reaction we do here or photon transfer reactions we do here so here we change the uh, atomic mass of the interferences or we change we make the interference neutral so that it will not allow to the cordophore system so in this way you can play uh, with the method different gases can be used so all this data is will is well known for which element which uh, elements are interfering according to you can use a gas so what is the advantage in current icpms like uh, you should have a system so that it should capable to do kd mode as well as drc mode because if you because there are instrument where you have only option with collision cell but when you perform the analysis that time you will come to know okay there are still i am getting some interference in kd mode then i have to use reactive gas but if your instrument doesn't have the capability to reaction gas you cannot do it so always we prefer to select the instrument which is capable to do collision gas as well as reaction gas both so collision reaction can be done in a single run so it is not like that you have to prepare different methods so after selecting wavelength the light will pass through the quadrupole uh, uh, fast towards the quadrupole which has four rods so by suitable choice of rf and dc ratio mass filter resolve individual atom the masses so already many webinars has done by uh, uh, done uh, to understand so you know how it is working the quadrupole system and then selected analyte then reach to the detector and detector uh, gives you electrical signal so this metal ion is to the dino surface so you know the emt is looks like this then multiplication of electrons happens here and it is getting amplified and you get higher signal using this electron multiplied tube this is just example i have given uh, for drinking water analysis uh, using collision reaction cell on icpms so what is the beauty of icpms is you are able to do very lower concentration you can see uh, some of the elements i don't know whether it is visible to you or not uh, silver and arsenic barium beryllium cadmium cobalt and many others which are present at very lower concentration and if you see sodium magnesium potassium calcium these are present in higher concentration so you know that icpms is stable for only lower concentration now if you want to do this do this higher concentration what you have to do because you may not get calibration for 20 ppm or 10 ppm on icpms so for these elements you have to dilute sample and then you have to aspirate again for detection of this lower or higher concentration so you have to do two run but it is again depend on the uh, manufacturer uh, you need to see the dynamic range uh, you are getting to analyze this so here you can see this is done on uh, this perkinel mar instrument where uh, we have done the analysis uh, of elements at from 100 ppt uh, to 50 ppt uh, 50 ppb and then higher concentrations were done from 50 ppb to uh, 20 ppm so in a single run you are able to do trace level and higher concentration you are able to calibration graphs for all this is what instrumentation parameters are used for analysis it was done on concentric uh, nebulizer or uh, to get high aspiration and high throughput and this is what dwell time is used for 50 ms to 100 ms so this dwell time is also important when you do uh, the analysis because it has capab if you have lower dwell time capability so the scanning happens very fast so that you should not miss any analyte and get higher sensitivity so this is what the detection limit chart observed for drinking water method so you can see most of the elements are within 10 ppt also some of the elements are up to 100 ppt so depend on the concentration so as per this method the method detection limits were done and almost the uh, detection limits the yellow cues are uh, near to uh, 10 ppt or 50 ppt this is what uh, the recovery test done for method validation so it was spike with some of the standard and you can see the recoveries are almost near to 100 in icpms 
Uh, I'm not going in detail with this. You can also do speciation studies. Suppose if you want to do different forms of arsenic, so you can couple ICPMS with HPLC, where you can use C18 column or any uh, suitable column, and the separation happens in HPLC, and the separated elements or uh, species will get introduced in ICPMS, and you can see the spectra like this. So you know. Like uh, some of the, this is the organic uh, mercury, uh, organic arsenic, and these are elemental inorganic arsenic. So this kind of speciation you can do in your sample. Uh, now last but not least, which is very important, sample preparation. Yeah, so you know, like in analytical process, there are different parameters are involved. Sampling, you need to collect sample, uniform sample. Then if you have a solid sample or some of the liquid sample, you have to perform the digestion. And if you see the digestion, digestion takes more time actually if you uh, calculate all. So almost 55% time takes by decomposition. So there are more chances of error when you do when you digest the sample, and you should get clear digestion solution, uh, clear solution for more accurate result and more uh, good recovery of uh, the analytes. Uh, then in instrument, if you see almost 5% time taken by care for analysis on ICPMOS or any uh, technique. And then evaluation of data, you need to see the data. If there are any interferences and recoveries, QC checks, you do here. And then report preparation. This is how to flow when you perform the analysis on AS, ICPMOS and ICPMS. So here I have mentioned some of the uh, important sample preparation method. So dry ashing, wet ashing, fusing and micro digestion. Uh, so dry ashing it is very old technique which is preferred for biological food to food stuff sample because the concentration is very less so you can take the sample in crucible big crucible and ash it in muffled furnace and the ash you can dissolve in acids and then do analysis uh, in uh, instrument so only challenge here is you cannot do volatile elements and there are chances of some contamination so if you are doing at ppb level this method is not preferred but for iron concentration of course you can use dry ashing then wet ashing, most of the people they prefer the wet ashing which is basically hot plate digestion where you take sample in a beaker, add acid and uh, you can you do the decomposition of sample. So matchstick is getting decomposed here and element gets extract. So again uh, like uh, this takes a long time actually if you want to digest soil sample you have to use teflon beaker, you have to add HF. So it may take almost five to six hours to destroy the uh, silicon matrix. And then uh, after drying this, you can dissolve some acids, dissolve in some acid and you can do it. So some of the elements like uh, mercury, arsenic, again challenging here when you do hot plate digestion. Sometimes people use reflex condenser here to minimize the operation. Then fusion, the fusion uh, basically uh, it is used for refractory elements or geological samples like rock, ores, minerals, ceramic. So in this process, what we do, we use flux actually, or some compounds, basic and acidic flux we use or oxidizing. So sample we mixed uh, with this flux, almost one s to five, one s to ten, or one s to fifty proportion, and then fuse it in muffled furnace or some fluxers, automatic fluxers are available. So we heat at very high temperature, more than thousand degrees centigrade, and the salt, uh, the sample, and this flux getting melt, and these elements are getting converted into salt form. Then we cool it, and then we add some acid and dissolve the salt. So. This is basically preferred for these elements at higher concentration, so you cannot use if you want to do trace level elements. But uh, this is the best technique for these kind of samples. Then nowadays people are moving for micro digestion. It is an instrument where you can digest sample very quickly with all safety interlocks are available there. Uh, you can see uh, micro. It is like our home micro digester where we apply some microwave power here and the vessel are used which are uh, made up of teflon material highly pure teflon is used and it works like a pressure cooker the sample is taken into the vessel acid and the it is the cap is closed actually and the oil vessel you can put into the microwave one and this microwave one is totally acid resistant so it is totally it is fully automatic with uh, safety interlocks like a pressure and temperature sensors are there so then you can close this cap. This is one instrument, uh, Titan MPS. This is again Perkinel Mar. So top loading instrument. And uh, he, this is a screen actually display. You can also connect to the computer. So there are different methods are available. And you can also prepare your own method. When you start the digestion, 
Yeah, so it will start being microwave to the vessel and the acid and sample starts reacting. The vapors are formed as it is closed technique. So again, the pressure is getting generated and the pressure and temperature are related to each other because of high pressure, the temperature increases and your sample getting dissolved completely. So this micro digester also have safety interlocks where if something happen in vessel, there is a safety disk is given here. So different instrument having different pressure capability. Above that, if it pressure is exceeding, this safety disk can break and pressure is, is getting released and then it will it is getting exhausted through exhaust. So that kind of uh, facility you have. And with this micro digestion, you are able to digest sample less than one hour, including cooling time. So this out, uh, with this, I'm concluding the uh, session and uh, thank you very much for att attention and your patience.